kids, welcome back to Roto Talk. Kids, welcome back. Ah, it's a beautiful Monday. Very rarely do you ever get to say that, right? But it's like 80 degrees, beautiful breeze. I can't run any boats because they're having a ski clinic, a uh, professional water skiing clinic on my water today and tomorrow. So uh, I can't run any boats unless I go over to my mom's to the big lake. And I'm too lazy for that. And excuse the hands, but uh, per usual, I've been doing some science experiments over there. Um, <clears throat> so... I ordered, if you watched the electric tunnel build, uh, or video I did yesterday, I think of the Maiden or day before, whatever that was, I said I had ordered the gas one on Friday, and I already got it today. So this is a massive boat. Check this out. Look, here's the sponson sides. <laughs> okay, this thing's huge. This is the hull plate. Now, it's only 48 inches, but man, it seems big. It just really, really does. Um, and then you got radio box, transom bits. There's some uh, bulkheads in there. More radio box and other gear in there. And a whole mess of other stuff. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and start this up. And we're going to work this through per the manual. Um, if it's a boat that I'm super familiar with, I don't necessarily use the manuals with zip kit stuff because I've just built so many like cracker boxes and stuff. I don't even don't even open them, and I probably should. Um, but this one we are going to do, and it's almost almost identical to the electric build, the electric tunnel, uh, with a couple caveats. But for the most part, it's pretty close. So we're going to open these things up, and we'll be right back. Actually, the heck with it. We're going to go ahead and open these up now. Might as well just do it if you're bored. Maybe I'll put some background music in. I don't know. We'll see. So, I read through the manual this morning while I was doing some real work. Stuff I actually do to pay the bills and buy boats like this. Uh, these are doubled. These are doubled. These are for the um, cowl hole down in the front. These are um, something. That's, yeah, something to do with the cowl frame maybe. I don't know can't remember then you've got two options if I'm reading this right you can put in two big ass servos so this would be your throttle servo this would be two steering servos okay or you can get the one they recommend that must just be a doubler I'm assuming yeah okay um, or you can buy the one they recommend which is a little robot <coughs> excuse me a little robot servo thing that you can buy but I got something different I actually ordered this the other day uh, for a completely different project. It wasn't for this boat. It might end up in this boat. It might not. I'll have to waterproof it and all that. But this servo, <clears throat> I tested it already. I was going to do a video on it, and I probably still will. Uh, it's probably going to go in Robo Mower because Robo Mower is getting some. He's not a Robo Mower anymore. He's a Robo Tractor. <clears throat> and he's running, and he's bringing my boats up and down the hill now. But I wanted to make some modifications to him. And this is originally for that, but I don't think I'm going to use it for that. I might use it for this boat, whatever else. So the trick to these, these big gas outboards, from what I understand, is uh, they turn very easily. I mean, just like easier than a rigger in the sense of a little goes a long way and you want a slow, gradual. And even with Expo, it just doesn't get it there. So they recommend uh, they meaning zip kit and lawless. Lawless is who makes the out drive, the outboard drive for the back. Um, they recommend using something a lot slower. Well, this is 180 kg rotational power. This thing's awesome. I already tested it. It's phenomenal uh, for the money. I think I got it for 60 bucks, um, and it will run from 12 to 48 volts. Don't quote me on that. I'll put a link in the description for it. But this thing's really sweet. We'll do. Actually, I'm not going to put a link in the description. We're going to do a whole video on reviewing this because uh, this is going to be really handy for some other things. We may use it on this boat. We may not. Um, so here's another doubler. If you use that servo one they recommend from the robot, <laughs> I use that term loosely. I'm a robotics engineer myself. And Okay, toy robot website. Um, <clears throat> so some stabilizers there. Uh, these are for the bottom uh, 
can't remember, ducts that go on the bottom of the boat. That sure looks like the tops to these, I'm guessing. Be like that. Yep. Okay. And some things. <laughs> I don't remember it all. We're going to use the manual. I got the manual. If you don't believe me, fuck six. I got the manual right here. I am going to go by the manual. So I got that going for me. Because um, I don't think, I was talking to my guys in the chat group today about this. Because I'm real excited about this. I have never ran. I did build the old zip kits tunnel outboard. But I never finished it. I built it and I couldn't find some of the things I needed. And it, I think we're in the process of moving. So I just sold the whole hull to a buddy of mine and never ran it. So I've never had a gas outboard before so i'm really excited for this it's gonna be quite a learning curve i'm sure so these are transom doublers and there's a bulkhead we're gonna separate these there's a bulkhead there's a transom there's a tramp damn a lot of transom parts 5a this is rear braces for the transom looks like nose bits for the cowl the cowl on this thing wait let me show you this Look at the size of this thing. This thing is massive. I'm gonna do a back, look at this. Look at that thing. That is huge. Um, I'm really, to be quite honest, hang on. <clears throat> I, I am really shocked that he can, that Joe at Zip Kits and the crew over there, I shouldn't just say Joe, it's a, it takes a, takes a village, right? I don't really, I'm not sure how he can sell this boat this cheap <laughs> because it's like, 200 and some bucks the kit and it comes with a lot of stuff there's uh i haven't even shown you all the stuff it comes with yet and it's like comes with hardware not hardware but uh, other bits and bobs and all the it's a hell of a deal a laid up fiberglass cowl i don't know if that comes with any of them all of them or if it's just special for me i don't know but i did buy this kit um and you know because god bless him he's in it for business this is part of the radio box totally sure what that is radio box lid and top tray oh why am i putting it over there okay this is this is like the later stuff and this is the immediate stuff <sighs> square doesn't look very square <laughs> i'm excited about this boat but that's why i want to do it by the book and i'm not i know absolutely fuck all nothing about gas outboards fuck all nothing i have never in person ever even seen um an outdrive a lawless outdrive and i'm ordering one of those as well the trick to these i don't know if it's a trick and excuse the wind if you hear the wind in the uh the microphone i got a beautiful breeze coming through here and i'm not shutting the door um and i talked to the gentleman at that owns lawless give heed you you vermin here's news to your advantage and so, it seems like a super nice guy and uh he's hooking me up i'm i'm buying a lower unit off of him and he's sending tons of directions with it which i'm so thankful because i've never never ever touched one of these things before so it's pretty cool but the problem with these one of the reasons what i was starting to say the reason i'm going by the book on this is because i i've never seen a build video for a ga rc gas outboard boat on youtube so if this is the only one i want it to be reasonably correct these are obviously the side plates this is, I think, yes, this is the uh, strut gauge for your, your prop. So we're going to put that up there. Because if I lose that, I'm screwed. I'll be bugging Joe every day. Confound you, Shadwell. You drove the thought right out of my head. And it was an uncommon pretty one. These are other things. <laughs> Sides of some sort we're going to put these over on the toolbox oh yeah we got this bag of grass here too okay let's see what else we got oh here's the bottom of our our duck the bottom of our hull pretty straightforward now if you guys watched and if you're going to build one of these now word of caution this is not the cheapest boat to build if anything, 
Hang on, my dog's humping the cat. Barry, stop, asshole. Um, if anything, this is probably next to like some bonsai twin or something crazy. This is probably one of the most expensive boats you can build. Uh, the Lawless Outdrive, I think, is $450. That's just for the lower unit. Then you have to slap a Zenoa engine on it, um, and that's another $250, $300, bucks, depending on where you get it. Then you have to buy funky servo stuff, and it's it, this... I think I told my guys all in, if you did this stupid cheap, is like $1,400 bucks ish It's not a cheap machine, but it's going to be fun. I've built a thousand gas boats in my life. I have a thousand gas boats. And I said, screw it. Throw caution to the wind. I'm going to build us a nice outboard here. Hopefully get a nice paint job on it. And uh, have a little bit of fun. And this will be my baby. This will not be something I'm building multiples of. <laughs> it's, too, it's pretty expensive. And I'm I'm not cheap when it comes to boats, man. I'll, I'll build a ton of boats. You guys see that. But ah, pretty expensive machine all in but uh i think it'll be worth it it'll be so neat to see i mean I, for anything else display thing's gonna be impressive it's huge all right so here's some uh sticks <laughs> for black i don't have everything memorized okay so these are uh spons and sides and we're gonna use the foam cutter again on this these are the cowl sides. These go inside the cowl, just like the electric one. Uh, these are the insides of the sponsons. These are the outside of the frame. We're going to put these sticks over here because I can't remember where they go. Uh, and these are other bits of the sponsons. The outer edge, I think. Okay. So we're going to put this stuff over on the toolbox drawer. That's where I store stuff that's not needed yet. So, we are going to need these little outside dudes. I'm pretty sure these are the outside dudes. <laughs> yep, those are the outside dudes. Okay. And then this is the transom. So, let's see, we're dealing with front or back. All right, so we got to flip this guy around, I'm assuming. No, that's right. Okay, I did put down a piece of craft paper here. I got a huge roll of this stuff. So, I thought, what the hell? I might as well use it. Now, I think what I might do is my trick with the stapler and staple this guy down. Um, you, With a tunnel, like I said in the electric build, tunnel build, uh, it's very important to build these flat. If you screw that up, the boat's trash. So Garbage day! Huh? No! Ah. Throw it away. It has to be flat. Even a rigger, in my opinion, has more forgiveness when it's not flat than one of these dudes. Um, and I love that electric one. I do have a different prop on it now. I haven't tested it yet. Uh, that electric one's great. And I've built many nitro tunnels, um, but don't get cocky. Just because you've driven a, a 3.5 or a 7.5 tunnel haul doesn't mean you have any idea how the gas ones work. And I'm going into this as a complete ignoramus, as I do with most things in my life. And, uh, so make it flat <laughs> moral of the story so what we're going to do is we're going to frame this thing up here let's see what we've got <clears throat> okay i know for a fact these go in the back near the transom i know this is a transom shit i don't know they're all numbered all right so let's get rid of the big sides we know we're not needing them yet that's a number two. So that dude's going to go right. Meow. I'm just dry fit and just to see. I'm not looking at the directions yet. Uh, of course, why would I, right? <clears throat> two, three, four. Okay. All right, so we're back. So I did staple this down. The manual says go ahead and glue in one, two, four, and five C. But I think it meant to say 5A, because 5A is tapped. And then we're gonna put on the sides, all right? So we'll just start off with one that's right below the camera. Oh, I didn't get that little dude out. Then make sure you sand out any little bits that are on there, okay? From the laser cut. I missed this. All right. 
a simple dimple. Hang on. All right, take yourself a square. The kit comes with one, but make sure you're good and flush. So here's the square for the kit. I'm just gonna use a steel block, okay? And some good old fashioned medium CA. Now it says in the manual, Sorry, the neighbor kids are over and somebody's crying. I figured you didn't want to hear that. So anyway, the manual says they use tight bond to do this whole thing, which really, or the, all this part I'm doing here. And I'm just building it the way I always build it. I just, it's how I do it. Had good results. And we will be rock and roll. Okay, so what I'm using here is just a steel block that's 90 up, 90. It's a machined block. Okay, but if you want to use the square, that's fine. I like using metal because the CA glue doesn't stick to it as well. All right, uh, let's see, where's... All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do two, one, and five A. Hopefully I'm right. I can't imagine five C is right. Let me double check the manual. Make sure I'm not being stupid. I do have it here. Okay, glue one, two, four, and 5C. This is 5C. I'm assuming they mean 5A because it's the only 5 with a tab on it. Okay? And then we're going to glue in our tops. Or our sides, I should say. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the other three out. Be right back. All right. We're back. So I took the liberty of tacking in the sides too. They just slide in. The biggest thing is make sure any laser marks are facing the inside and make sure they're flush all the way down the bottom. Now, one discrepancy, another discrepancy, I might have found in the directions, Joe, if you're watching. Uh, FD, FB. So uh, it says add both trans and brace, and let's see. 5B and A in front of C. So that's actually 5D and C in front of those. And then we put our drill template on the outside, okay? And usually what I do with this, so I don't have to worry about this shining through the paint, I make sure the laser side is facing in, okay? Then we're gonna do, these are both identical pieces. Make sure you sand your nubs off, okay? Oh, it's okay. All right, and that's gonna be a nice thick transom, but we are gonna use tight bond for that. Then we're gonna super clamp it down, all right? Let's see, what else we got? And the braces. So we're going to glue these in as well, right here and right here. And they suggest putting this square in against the clamp right there to support your transom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Right. There we go. We've got her all clamped up in the ass end. Any way you need to do it, go ahead and do it. I put clips on the small bits. doesn't matter. Nothing fancy. Um, and then after that, we're going to, let's see. Ah, see me? Look at this. So proud of me. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Add bulkheads three, locking them into the sides. Okay, yeah, we'll do all that too. So I guess we'll just have to sit and wait. Uh, the usual thing. So that's it. Like I said, there's very, very little difference between this build and the electric tunnel. The electric tunnel is exceptionally easy. Um, this one's got a couple different things, but mostly it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so yeah, that's about it. One thing we can do, I suppose, while we're waiting. Hang on. We can go ahead and double these up. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, let's look through the manual. We'll do it together. It'll be sweet. It'll be fun. Yeah, right there. Okay. See those glue four mounts together. Tab mounts on each end. Yep. So you end up with two of each. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'll probably sand them just after I'm done. So what you're going to do... Put the two tab bits together. Like that. So 
so it's going to look like this. Okay. Um, probably going to use CA glue or tight bond, I guess. I'll use wood glue. That's fine. Whatever. And we're going to go ahead and uh, cinch these up, stick a clamp on them, let them cook. Be right back. Found the best way. I already did the first one to align these. Is just get a little gooey. Slap some. I'm just using Tight Bond 3 waterproof, waterproof, sorry, wood glue. Okay, like this. That's it. Then this side, this side you can't go flush because you got tabs on it, right? So I'm gonna do. We're gonna go flat like that. So, so you guys can see it a little bit better. I'm lining it up with my fingers and pushing it flat against the workbench. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing with these discs here. Be right back. All right. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna put in trans uh, bulkhead three. It's these two pieces here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. No real need to square this up if you don't want to, um, but we will. Okay. Want to be the CA? Now I'm using medium CA on this build because that thin's just a nightmare, and I end up with uh, devil fingers by the time I'm done when I use thin. Okay. So what I try to do during builds, like if you're waiting for a specific part to cure or something to that nature, uh, try to do the other stuff as well. You know, like little bits and bobs like this. Saves time on your build, right? It's like you don't have to follow the directions. I mean, read through them, but you don't have to follow them in order if there's little things you can be doing. Okay, and then it says next to glue in the bulkhead nose, or the front nose, I'm sorry. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And it says make sure that that nose piece, where is that thing? I'll have to find it, but anyway, it's about yay long. We're going to put it right in the front, and it says to make sure that it's firmly butted up against here, all right? Now, one thing you want to make sure, guys, if this is like one of your first builds, which I can't imagine it would be as big a boat as this is and whatever, but if it is, no matter what build it is, whether it's a super sport, whatever the case may be, um, make try to be and this is funny coming from me, but try to be neat with your CA glue beads if you're tacking them like I do. Tacking them like this saves a ton of time because it just boom, 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 and then you can glue them in. Um, but be careful with your CA. You don't want big globs. A glob, a thick CA bead is useless. You want to be thin, and if it's thick, it, if you're going to uh, panel something else up to it, okay, it's gonna make it stick out. You wanna make sure as thin as possible. So what I do is I'll take the needle of the bottle and go right up it, and then I shoot the activator right at it so it kind of spreads it into the joint and it makes for a nice tight if you need to laminate something else up with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the bulk at, or the nose. Then I'm gonna take off these clamps. And I think this is a good point to epoxy uh, what's already in here, I believe. So be right back. So we've got the nose clamped up, the nose wood, got the ass end still clamped up and glue it. Now, the last thing that we're going to do tonight is you've got these, I forgot about this with the electric, you got these A, B, C, and D. These are for, um, so you can put the skins on and you can glue something to the skins. So what we're going to do with these, <clears throat> you can see. A, well, A, B, C, D. All right, so I'm going to use wood glue again, nothing massive, and we're going to go ahead and seal all those up, both sides, A, B, C, D. Okay, that's going to give you some mounting surface for your deck skins when you put them on. 
Oh, that's what those were. <laughs> anyway, um, and then what I'm going to do after that is complete, I'm going to take that opportunity before I get into this, I'm actually going to go ahead and epoxy it because I'm going to call it a night tonight. And I want what I've done so far to be epoxied and dried and cured, just cured before morning. Because uh, been long in the tooth, and I think that's enough for today. So, until the next time, kids, go ahead and glue these in with the Type Bond 300 or Type ah, Woo Type Bond 3, and then we're gonna epoxy all of our joints up, and we'll continue on tomorrow. Keep dry side up. Bye. Wait!